In this next video, we have Andrew Shear, who is uh, replacing uh, Pierre Polyev on that day. Uh, Andrew Shear versus Christian Freeland versus uh, Karina Gold and uh, Gilbo. I found an old video of Gilbo where he used to work for Greenpeace and he climbed the CN Tower to put a sign up there, but he looked like a complete whack job. CMP. At issue is the Auditor General's findings that officials at SDTC broke conflict of interest laws 186 times and funneled 400 million of taxpayers' money into their own companies. All this at a time when Canadians can barely afford to eat or heat and house themselves. Yeah. Now, by refusing to accept your ruling, they have effectively paralyzed Parliament, pushing aside all other work to address the housing crisis, the inflation crisis, and the crime crisis this government unleashed. Yeah. Why not end the cover-up, hold the lawbreakers to account, and let Parliament get back to work? Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. False, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that member sat in your chair at one point, and I think he would have an interesting perspective if the opposition was not following his ruling as he is doing. I quote, and I repeat, what you said, Mr. Speaker, is I believe the best way for this to be achieved would be to follow the usual course of a prima facie question of privilege, that is, a referral to the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs. The government is willing to do that. We're willing to vote in favour of it. The only party that is holding Parliament up are the Conservatives because they don't want the truth out there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And ask the honourable member from South Shore St. Margaret's please not to take the floor unless recognised. The honourable member... Order. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. If she scrolled up just a little bit more on your ruling on the website, Mr. Speaker, she would see where you ruled that withholding evidence after a parliamentary production order is a contempt of Parliament, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. We're talking about Liberal insiders funneling cash into their own pockets. Why don't they want to get to the bottom of this? Yeah. And while Conservatives are putting forward real solutions to lower taxes, to make housing more affordable, and to end the crime wave that this Prime Minister unleashed, this government is going to great lengths to keep this information hidden. They're effectively obstructing justice. Why not let Parliament get back to work and hand over the evidence to the RCMP? Yeah. Even if the RCMP would investigate that, they're so corrupt. Like That's just my opinion. And the Liberals want to choose their own committee that will investigate the matter and obviously be corrupt and not really investigate the matter. So that's why that the Conservatives want the evidence to be transferred uh, to the RCMP, which is the best you know, option there is between the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not even sure the leader, the House leader of the opposition believes his own spin. Um, <laughs> like, he could scroll down a little bit and see what you <laughs> asked of him, which was to prepare a motion that you said you would accept to send it to committee to be studied. Mr. Speaker, we welcome that. We will get this studied. Let's get this out of the House. But there's only one group of MPs that don't want that to happen because what will come out is they are trying to abuse the extraordinary powers of this place, override the rights of Canadians, and get rid of police independence. Mr. Speaker, that's not acceptable. The Prime Minister's carbon tax scheme. A new report from the Parliamentary Budget Officer shows yet again that Canadians are worse off under this tax. Here's what the total bill will be when the NDP Liberals finish quadrupling this tax. It'll cost people in Ontario $1,400, $1,500 in Newfoundland, and a whopping $2,000 in Saskatchewan. Canadians are already struggling with higher costs, higher groceries, and higher mortgage rates. The last thing they need is another bill from a useless carbon tax. If the government's so sure that Canadians support the tax, why not let the people decide in a carbon tax election? The Honourable Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Mr. Speaker, let me read you the first paragraph of the PBO's report. And I quote, Considering only the fiscal impact of federal fuel charge, PBO estimates that average household in each of the backstop provinces in 2030-31 will see a net gain receiving more from the Canada carbon rebate than the total amount they pay in federal fuel charge and related GST, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition should apologize to Canadians for misleading them all these months. Listen to what this guy's going to say in the video I'm going to show you right at the beginning. That's the minister. Of the, that's a liberal minister right there. And he's misleading Canadians, by the way.
Greenpeace is climbing the world's tallest building today to tell the world not to be fooled by the Liberal government. As I've decided to run for the nomination of the Liberal Party of Canada. He's the only Liberal minister that is actually a Liberal right now that actually told people not to be fooled by the Liberals, not to trust them. <laughs> Colleagues on all sides, please, I'm going to ask you to not take the floor unless the Speaker recognizes you. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. The Minister might want to read the rest of the report. <laughs> because exactly. in the quote he cited, he focused on a very key word, only mm -hmm. the direct costs. When you factor in all the economic costs, it costs the Canadian household $1,400. Canadians are net losers under this carbon tax scheme, and this minister knows it. So, if he's so sure that Canadians want this government to keep quadrupling the tax, why not let the people decide in a carbon tax election? Like, imagine reducing pollution by taxing it. Oh, well, you're polluting? We'll tax you. There's no proof that it actually reduced carbon emissions. And of course, every government that's actually taxing their, their own people with a carbon tax in their provinces, like, of course, they're going to say it works because they want to keep the tax. So they're going to say, oh, yeah, it works. Like, we reduced our emissions because they want to keep it there, obviously. But they're not actually saying the truth because they're making money off of it. They're pretending that they're not, but they are. Or it wouldn't be there. Why would you put a tax if you're not making any profit? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Let me read you another paragraph from the report, Mr. Speaker. Moreover, in 2030-31, for all backstop provinces, we estimate that the average household in each income quintile will see a net gain, except for average household in the highest income quintile, Mr. Speaker. You know what the Leader of the Opposition is doing? He wants to take money away from the middle class and poorer Canadians to protect his rich CEO friends. That's what he's doing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from... The Honourable Member for Regina Capel. From Regina Capel. After nine years of NDP Liberal government, taxes are up, costs are up, crimes up, and times up. And Canadians are suffering. And the Liberals look around the country and they see tent cities popping up in our communities. They see millions lining up at food banks and families falling further and further into debt. And what do they think is the cause of all these problems? That Canadians aren't paying enough in taxes. That must be why they've already hiked the carbon tax five times and why they're going to hike it to 61 cents a litre. How can making everything more expensive provide any relief for Canadians? Exactly. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I am glad that the Conservatives are finally talking about the economy because it gives me a chance to highlight some good economic news we've had. Last week we learned that inflation in August was at 2%. In fact, for all of this year... You should be really happy, you know, that the inflation that brought the prices up by like 20% in the groceries, like mostly because of the carbon tax and the inflation, but, you know... When inflation goes up and then it goes down, the prices stay up regardless of what the inflation is. So you're supposed to be happy that the inflation is just increasing the cost of goods a little bit less. Inflation has been within Bank of Canada's target range. Mm -hmm. That means interest rates are coming down. Meanwhile, wages have been outpacing inflation for 19 months in a row. But the Conservatives don't like to talk about that because good news for Canadians is bad news. Yes, exactly. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. She can tell all the people lining up at food banks that they've never had it so good and she knows that prices are not coming down. She also knows that her carbon tax won't stop a single forest fire or flood. They've admitted that. So Canadians get the brutal double whammy of all the extra costs associated with natural disasters plus the carbon tax on top of it. And now the NDP leader is trying to pull off another stunt. He's trying to fool Canadians that he's got some new position on the carbon tax. In reality, he loves it. He's voted for it 24 times. If they're so sure that Canadians love their carbon tax, why don't they take it to the Canadian people and let them decide in a carbon tax election? They've increased the carbon tax five times already. They're going to quadruple it. And then they're going to double the quadrupling, then double it again. We'll end up 
having something like $2.50 of carbon taxes on our fuel at the pump for absolutely no reason. And they're saying that they're giving back like these credits to all these families and all that. It's like $250 every three months. It's like it's not a, like an amount of money that will impact a family and be like, oh my God, I'm going to vote for Justin Trudeau again.